Today is the beginning of a new week of video devotions here at Covenant Keepers Ministries. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Les Potts. It's Monday, July 17, 2023. And I want to talk this week about how many times we get ourselves locked down and then become locked up. And I want you to know, and I'm going to be addressing this thought all week, you can be locked down but not locked up. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 20 through 23, after Joseph had been attempted to be seduced by Potiphar's wife and she lied about it and his anger was aroused. And in verse 20, Joseph's master took him, put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's hand because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Now I'm taking a big leap into 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12 in the Amplified, or the, excuse me, the Message, the Message Bible. And, and so here's what it says there in, in chapter 4 and verse 8. We have been surrounded and battled by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us, trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us, he lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. When we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. So locked down, but not locked up. I want to address this thought all week. It appears clearer and clearer, to me anyway, that our world is approaching the end of life as the Bible describes it. In other words, this heaven and this earth will pass away and there'll be a new heaven and new earth. Construction is nearing completion on a one world government. That will move us into a one world monetary system and it will be finalized in a one world religion. We just went through a a worldwide event called COVID. For the most part, it's over. And I think it's in anticipation of a new event that's coming. The World Health Organization wielded control over nations during COVID. Any upcoming pandemic, real or imagined, will force actions upon citizens worldwide that will cause a lockdown, which will make COVID seem like recess. You can expect it to happen. Will you be ready? And I'm not going to discuss physical uh, preparation, food preparation, and physical safety concerns, as I do not believe it. I am equipped at this point to to give you something you can rest your hat on. But I can give you spiritual instruction that you can go to the bank on. Let me say this now and make it clear. I invite and encourage us to be faithful to God when we're experiencing trouble in our life. Don't abandon following God when trouble surrounds you in life. Whether that trouble is personal or corporate, we need to remain faithful. That's why I want to use as a basis for this discussion Joseph's life as recorded in the book of Genesis. You see, God has given us a stewardship, and all God wants from us is that we remain or we stay steadfast and faithful over what he's granted to us. Storms may arise that we have never experienced before. Troubles coming from every side. And our own government 
may perpetrate things upon us that we could not have imagined three years ago. In that struggle, and in any struggle that you're going through in life, I'm inviting you to place your trust in God alone. Rise to the occasion. Set your eyes on your King Jesus. Here is going to be some new expressions, I think, are to be coming from believers in the not-too-distant future. We've been pushed around a little in our life, but this is different. We've never experienced anything quite like this. There's an edge of fear about us. We're worried that this isn't going to come out all right. The what-ifs are running rampant through our mind. We're beginning to wonder how long this is going to last. And it just started minutes ago. And we're in a lockdown. And we got there by no fault of our own. And now there's suffering everywhere around us. People we love and care about are suffering. We're suffering. We have torment. We're being pushed around like never before. What are we going to do? Now, I don't know if that's prophetic or not, but I do know one thing. There are all kinds of storms on the horizon. Trouble will never be escaped by you and I on this earth, trials and tribulations, and we need to remain faithful to God as the example of Joseph is and as the example of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Bible warns in 1 Peter 4, 15 and 16 that none of those who bear the name of Christ should suffer because they broke the law or disturbed the peace. Let me quote it. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. When the trials of this new government that's being formed as a worldwide government begins to push against your faith in Christ, hold firm, stand still, see the salvation of your God, be still, quiet your spirit by sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Turn off the thousands of voices you've been listening to and get into the closet space with Jesus. Obey what he tells you to do and watch him work as Joseph watched God work on his behalf. Now, Joseph could have become bitter about all the lies, the accusations, and the betrayals of his own brothers, but he remained faithful. And I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you so clear you will not forget it. By the power of the Holy Spirit in your trial, you will remain faithful. You will be strong and your God will defend you. Father, I know someone needed to hear this word today. I don't know who it is, but I'm praying that those who listen to this, if they've got friends who need to hear the message that Joseph was protected thrown into prison and protected and given favor and ended up running the prison, then you're a God who can turn the table so easy. And we may feel locked down. We may face another COVID event or something similar to COVID or worse than COVID. Government may turn against Christians worldwide, but we know who our God is. And through our God, we shall do valiantly. And you're only asking us to stand firm, hold on to our faith, not cast away our confidence in these days to the glory of God. May we remain strong. Encourage your people today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's strength over you today. Hey, you're serving a God to whom all power and authority belong. You can trust him. Have a great day.